I thought I'd have a dummy run for my Jubilee tea party next weekend. Hello there, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. I've set out to lay my table up, but before we get to the Jubilee, we've got a birthday to celebration. I thought that would be a great opportunity to have a go at making the Jubilee trifle. Normally, we only eat trifle once a year, and it's on Boxing Day. My dad normally makes it, and he is a past master at balancing the ratio of jelly to custard. And as a family, we always layer up our trifle in a particular way, which seems to be the opposite of everybody else I know. So let me know in the comments which order you would normally lay your trifle up between the sponges, the fruit, the custard and the jelly. And do you add cream? I'm not going to precisely follow the recipe for the Jubilee trifle because I don't want to make my own Swiss rolls and my own amaretti biscuits, so I've bought those. But I have had a problem making my own custard. And you'll see, um, <laughs> and I'm going to keep it real in this video and show you what went wrong. I made my custard not once, not twice. And in the end, I decided to resort to good old bird's custard powder. Well, I'm sitting here at my Jubilee tea table with my bunting around the edge of the table. This isn't the bunting I showed you how to make in a previous video. I've actually got that strung up on the pergola over the tea table. But I have got this beautiful flower arrangement. I decided not to go with red, white and blue flowers. I think the reds are too garish and the blues don't look natural. So I went with the flowers that I had to hand. And that's a combination of silk flowers and fresh flowers left over from my regular Freddy's Flowers deliveries. Whatever you're doing to celebrate the Jubilee, I hope you have a lovely time spending it with family. Are you planning on making a Jubilee trifle? I am as well, but I'm going to have to cheat. I cannot be making Amaretti biscuits and Swiss rolls from scratch. So I've printed out the recipe from the BBC Good Food website. I'll leave a link to that in the show notes under the video. And I'm trying to work out how I can adapt the recipe to make it quick and easy to make. I've searched high and low for a lemon curd sponge roll and I finally found one in M&S. I've also bought some Amaretti biscuits, also from M&S, and good old Hartley's jelly. Imagine making your own fruit jelly from scratch using gelatine. This is going to be so much easier. And then it's the tricky ingredients, lemon extract which I actually found in Sainsbury's this morning. I also need arrowroot. Now, I don't know what arrowroot is generally used for, and I put this on our weekly shopping list, so my husband did a really good job of finding this. I'm going to start off by making my jelly, so I'm using Hartley's lemon jelly, and the instructions say to cut up the cubes of the jelly and dissolve it in half a pint of boiling water. I like to use a pair of scissors to do this. And one the, once the jelly is dissolved, I then need to top up with another half pint of cold liquid. This smells absolutely lovely. I can remember eating cubes of this raw jelly as a child. Let me know in the comments if you used to do the same too. Half a pint of water. Add the jelly cubes, taking care not to scold myself. And then leave that to do its own thing. The next thing I'm going to do is to take my cans of mandarin segments. So I've got two cans, the recipe calls for four cans, but I'm halving my quantities. I'm going to drain off the fruit and the liquid so that I can add some of the liquid into my jelly when I need to add that extra half pint. And my next job is to slice up the sponges. I'm not going to make a whole dish of trifle. I'm going to put mine into individual little dessert dishes. So I'm going to cut my slices quite slim because I'm not going to use a big trifle bowl. 
I'm putting these in little glass dishes and, well, Pyrex, I suppose, little cups as well. I'm going to use my sharpest knife and saw my way down. I'm going to cut each slice in half so I can put that up and it will show in the side of the dish. Just so you can see it. And now my jelly is dissolved. I can add in the rest of the mandarin juice and then top that up to the one pint level with cold water from the tap. So I'm, I'm going to leave the jelly to cool while I get on and make the mandarin coolie. So if the raspberry coolie, the mandarin coolie, I need my mandarins 45 grams of sugar, but I need to halve that, so that's just 22, 22 grams of sugar. So there's my fruit into the pan, and then my sugar. I've made a mistake. I'm going to have to rescue some of the fruit. It was only half the fruit that I put in to make the coulis, because the other half goes into the trifle hole. So the mandarins have broken down. The next thing I need to do is slake the ground arrowroot. I have no idea what slake, S-L-A-K-E, means. But a little more about the arrowroot powder is a general thickener or glaze used for sweet and savoury cooking. So let's get on and do that. I imagine it just means dissolve. Halving my recipe, I need only eight grams of the arrowroot. So I put that into a small bowl. Add one tablespoon of water. So if this is to thicken, I don't really understand what the difference between arrowroot and cornflour is, because the recipe also calls for cornflour in something else. So that has mixed together. I then need to add the juice of half of a lemon, but because I'm halving my quantities, it's a quarter of a lemon, so I've just cut off the end of the lemon. I reckon that'll be enough. And then what I think I do is I tip this into the whole pieces. Then I add in the broken down pieces, mix it all together, and then allow that to cool. So my next job is to check on the jelly and see whether that's ready to put a pip there, to put onto the fruit and then make my custard. For the custard I need 425 millilitres of double cream, but I'm doing half, so that's 212 millilitres. Well, it's 222, that's near enough. So I put that into the saucepan and warm it, stirring it with a wooden spoon. I then need three eggs, but I'm halving the recipe. So I've got two eggs, just the yolks. Whisk the eggs together with sugar, corn flour and lemon extract. 
that much. So one tablespoon of cornflour, I'm doing half quantities. So that's half a tablespoon, which I'm going to guess is that much. And then one teaspoon of lemon extract, so that's just going to be half a teaspoon. I'm going to use a cap for. Smells very lemony. Mix that together. In a bowl, whisk together egg yolks, sugar, flour, and lemon extract. Then gradually pour the hot cream into the bowl whilst whisking continuously. So my cream isn't going to fit into this tiny glass. So what I might do is put some of the cream into here and then tip it back into the saucepan, whisking continuously. Immediately return the whole lot back into the saucepan and continue whiskering over gentle heat until thick and smooth. So there is my warmed cream. I guess the thing is, you don't want to end up with scrambled eggs. I'll do that in reverse. And then back onto the heat. Oops, I took my eye off the saucepan and I do look like I've got scrambled eggs. Mm. Might start again. Well, the custard is definitely getting thicker, but I am actually, as the instructions say, having to stir it continuously. And it feels like I've been stirring it for quite a long time. Sadly, this batch of custard split as well. I think perhaps I cooked it too long. Well, the answer seems to be to put the pan into a bowl of cold water and whisk vigorously with a balloon whisk and it seems to be working. I'm going to have to have a rethink about my custard. It hasn't gone at all well, so back to the jelly. Pouring that into the bowls. A while later I was on the point of throwing away my homemade custard and getting out the birds instant mix when I thought I'd just give it one more go and beat it together and actually the custard came together reasonably well. It tasted absolutely gorgeous. It had a slight gritty texture to it but not dissimilar to the sort of grittiness you get when you've got Swiss roll soaked in jelly. It was the end of a long day, so I haven't got any video of me topping up my trifles with the mandarin coulis or indeed adding the whipped cream on the top, but suffice to say, all tasted gorgeous. But next time I think I'm going to keep it really simple and just use our family recipe and switch out our traditional strawberry flavours for the fresh lemon and orange. I think that's quite enough cooking for today, so let's move on to safer ground with a bit of flower arranging. So you can see me here, I've got a wire hanging basket frame which I am attempting to fix on top of our open fruit bowl. Now, when you see the finished arrangement, you'll see that I switched out the fruit bowl for one of my mixing bowls. It just seemed to give a much better fit. I'm using some of my silk flowers and greenery. I'm finding that the fresh greenery in my garden still hasn't hardened off and it was just um, going to droop too much. So I start off building a mass of greenery and then add in my silk flowers. But because I decided I didn't really have enough flowers to fill out this quite big centerpiece, I then added in some water and some fresh flowers left over from one of my recent Freddy's Flowers deliveries. With my floral centrepiece done, I threw a linen tablecloth onto my patio table and added a garland of festive bunting round the edge and then set the table with my red and blue transfer ware all ready for afternoon tea. Whatever plans you've got for the Jubilee weekend, I hope you have a great time celebrating with your friends and family. That's all for me for now and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>